Shalom. Uh, sorry if the screen's acting funny. Uh, they just updated this. Now I gotta change everything back. Um, okay, so uh, you saw the title, and maybe you're a Christian, and you're like, you know, kind of clicked on it to be like, oh, I'm gonna teach him a lesson. You know? um, but let's consider something here, and um, I want to start reading here, and um, I want to make an apology. Um, actually, somebody uh, that watches the channels on my, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, videos on my channel said that my videos haven't been as deep, and um, and I took no offense to it, by the way, you know who you are, <laughs> um, but you, um, you know, and I, I agree, um, things haven't been as uh, deep as I would like them to be, and uh, as I explained to this person, you know, just a lot of things have been vying for my time, and uh, it's, you know... It's not always easy for me to get into things, but um, this is something that I've kind of been studying off and on, um, which has actually been an element in almost all of my studies, but um, I think I went too far. I want to bring this to the attention of whoever's watching. Um, give me a second here. I'm sorry. Um... Uh, whatever. Okay, I'll just start up here. <laughs> okay. So here, after... That's, that's something that's not related. Okay, uh, this is in Deuteronomy 12, 28. Um, I'll just start reading. Observe in here... Um, and I would... I would, uh, I would believe that the Hebrew there is uh, Shema. Anyways, uh, observe and hear all these words which I command you, or the... Um, and that it may go well with you and with uh, your children after you forever. Uh, when you do that which is good, uh, or when you do good and right in the sight of Yahweh, your Elohim. I know it says thy, but I'm not all that great with Elizabethan English. Uh, when Yahweh, uh, thy, or your, whatever, sorry. <laughs> when Yahweh, your Elohim, shall cut off the nations from before you, or the Goyim, uh, is the word for nations, from before you, uh, when you, I guess, where you go to possess them, and you succeed them, uh, and dwell in their land. Okay, here's the part I was wanting to get to. Basically, whenever you go into the nations, and you basically defeat them, and set up, and start living in their land, uh, take heed to yourself that you be not snared by following them. After that, uh, that they be destroyed from before you, and you not inquire, um, that you inquire not after their Elohim or their gods or, you know, their false gods, saying, How did these nations serve their Elohim? Even so, I w will I do likewise. Uh, verse 31. Uh, you shall not do so unto Yahweh your Elohim, for every abomination to Yahweh which he hates, key phrase, he hates, every abomination to Yahweh which he hates, they have done, or have they done, unto their Elohim. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire of their Elohim, what thing uh, soever I command you, observe to do it. You shall not add nor diminish from it. Do not add to or take away. Um, I don't, now let me let me say this. <clears throat> I'm about to read into Deuteronomy 13 because, as we know, the written Torah back in Moshe's day had no chapters or verses. So I'm just going to keep on reading. Um, so, okay, bear in mind here, he's telling them whenever you go into the, the these foreign nations or the Goyim nations, the land, when you go in there and you set up and you start living there, do not inquire of their ways. Do not inquire of their gods. Don't even do it to, you know, to do it unto Yahweh. It, it is an abomination, and I hate everything that they do. It's an abomination to Yahweh. Don't do it. Um, hopefully soon I'll be posting another video talking about certain other pagan ways. Um, um, and, and it's you'll see why. Um, 
it, it's basically talking about you know Christmas and Easter. <laughs> um, you know the, these all these pagan practices that can be found in them that Christians do. Okay, um, so. Anyways, let's get back on topic here. Um, so, okay, don't do like the pagan people do. Don't do not do any of the practices. Don't do it. Even if you're saying that I'll do it, but I'll do it for Yahweh, don't do it. I hate it. It's an abomination. Don't do it. Now, let's go back up here. Well, let's go up here. Now we're in uh, verse, or chapter 13, verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and uh, gives you a sign or a wonder... And the sign or the wonder comes to pass, uh, whereof he spoke unto you, saying, Let us go after other gods, other Elohim, uh, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. You shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For Yahweh your Elohim proves you, or he tests you to know whether you love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul. Let's keep reading. Uh, you shall walk after Yahweh your Elohim and fear him and his commandments, his, uh, his mitzvot. If I said that right. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, keep his commandments and obey his voice and you, sh and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death, because he has spoken to turn. I'm going to read the italicized. He has spoken to turn you away from Yahweh your Elohim. But without the italicized, it says he has spoken to turn away from Yahweh your Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust you out of the way. Or out of the out of the way which Yahweh your Elohim commands you to walk in the Torah, by the way, is what he's talking about. So shall you put the evil away from the midst of you. So let's bring this together. I'm gonna do this. I got this split, and I know it's kind of backwards, but you see what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so. I started off by talking about how in uh, chapter 12 it says that whenever you go into the foreign nations, um, the Goyim, Gentile nations, if you will, uh, do not look how they do their practices or their whatever their ways are um, for their gods. Yahweh hates him. He hates those ways. They're an abomination. Then he goes on to say that if, if there be a prophet from among you who performs these, you know, signs and wonders and he, he dreams dreams, and I'm, I'm sure that's talking about some kind of, you know, visions, if you will, uh, interpretive um, dreams. You know, if he does that, but then he says, let's go on and do like the other gods. Uh, let's, let's do like the Goyim do, the, uh, these, these pagan nations. Let's do like them. He says, don't do it. <laughs> do not do it. He's trying to turn you away from the ways of Yahweh. See, let me read this, verse 3. That, uh, you will not hearken to, unto his words. You won't consider them, you won't hear them, you won't even do them. You will not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For Yahweh or Elohim is testing you to know whether you love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after Yahweh your Elohim and fear him and keep his commandments, his mitzvot, his Torah, and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. So, what I have just read to you is basically the formula my dog is looking at me because I'm yelling. <laughs> it's okay. Um, basically, what I'm showing here to you <clears throat> is that something, <laughs> sorry, um, is that this is the formula that um, I guess you could say Karaites, um, 
Kerites, uh, what, what's the other word I'm looking for? Um, contextualists look at, and messianics as well, uh, most of them anyways, they look into this, uh, and this is the formula to proving whether what you have in your midst is a true prophet or a false prophet. This is the formula. So if, if they, if a prophet comes up and starts, you know, basically doing these things and they, they you know, they try to tell you to turn away from the way of Yahweh, which is the Torah, the Nevi'im, the prophets, and the Kitavim, the writings, if you will, and, you know, tells you to start, you know, let's, let's go after other gods, and let's do other ways, and let's turn away from Yahweh. First of all, uh, well, I'll get into that in, in a minute, but, um, Excuse me for a second here. I'm going to do a search. Um, I'm still here. <laughs> ah, where is that section? Anyways, I'll just talk as I do it. Um, this is what they use to prove whether a prophet is a true prophet or not. Uh, if they're trying to do away with the Torah, if they're trying to get you to follow after other ways. And, you know, I was looking at this, and I had a very, I don't know if you'd call it an epiphany or revelation or whatever. Um, let's see here. Um, but I had I started having this thought that... You know, this is, this is, there's something, here it is. Bear with me here. Hey, there it is. Um, yeah, this is it. All right. Many of you know, already know where I'm at. Um, let's see here. Where do I want to start reading? I'm going to bring this now into the Brit Hadashah, the Renewed Testament, or the uh, Renewed Covenant, Renewed Testament, whatever you want to call it. Um, see here, good fruit, good trees bear good fruit, um, you'll know them, wherefore by their fruits you will know them. By the way, this is the way of Yahweh, or word of Yahweh, uh, translation, I kind of like it. Anyways, um, uh, let's see here, okay, so it's kind of contextualized to Deuteronomy 12 and 13, as I just read, uh, I'm going to start reading right here, Matthew, or Matthew 7:19. Every tree that brings uh, not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. By the way, this is um, this is Yeshua speaking. Yeshua, sorry. Um, wherefore, by, uh, wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Okay, so basically by their works, what they do, what they say. Uh, you know, you'll see what kind of fruit they're bearing. You'll know if they're good or bad. Not everyone that says unto me, Sovereign, Sovereign, or Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of Shemayim, heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, of Yahweh, which is in Shemayim, heaven. Um, many will say to me in that day, Sovereign, Sovereign, have we not prophesied in your name, and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works? And then I will, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Anomia. Uh, other translations say uh, lawlessness. It's basically saying you who are without. Torah, the instructions I spoke, Moshe wrote down, you don't work by my Torah, you do not do by my Torah, depart from me, I don't even know you. Are you making the connection? <laughs> I mean, okay, so the, this video, which as I'm recording it right now, I haven't really put the title up, but... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be titling this that is Christianity an assembly of false prophets or a church of false prophets? Well, are they? <laughs> Look, this was the word before Yeshua was even on the earth. 
Okay. This is the word, the Davar of Yahweh, of God thy Elohim, Yahweh thy Elohim. This is his words. This is truth. This is his instructions. How insane would it be for someone like let's 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 use Yeshua. He's the topic here, really. Wouldn't it be insane if this guy comes up, Yeshua? And remember, Moshe said that uh, there would be a there there will be a greater prophet than well the Torah says this. There would be <clears throat> there would be a greater prophet uh, come up greater than Moshe, and you must listen to him. That does not mean that he has the authority to change or do away with the Torah. It's just a better prophet or whatever. Anyways, in, in kind of in a sense, you know, he was called the second Adam, but in a sense he's kind of a, a second Moses. Sort of. I won't delve into that right now, but um, so let's 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 take it out here. The Christian, or your typical Christian, I should say, not all of them, will they teach that um, Yeshua, or Jesus, did away with the law. Came to fulfill it, which means he did away with it. We don't have to keep it anymore. We're not under the law anymore. We're free to do whatever we want. We got grace. Yeehaw. Problem I have with that is, okay, if that's true, then according to Deuteronomy 12 and 13, he's a false prophet. And if he's a false prophet, then that means he's not even the Messiah or the Christ. And that means that any Christian pastor that comes my way tells me, I'm free from the law. Jesus set me free from it. He's a false prophet too. Because remember, these were the scriptures in Yeshua's day. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Hebrews. <laughs> None of them were even written. These were the scriptures. And in fact, Shaul, or Paul, the apostle, the emissary, he instructed the Jews and the Gentiles, if you will, to test everything that the apostles were speaking about the gospel and about Yeshua and the Messiah against the scriptures, which were in the Tanakh, the Torah, the Nevi'im, the Kitavim, all of them. That's that, that. Those were the scriptures that he was telling them to test what he, they were saying against. He reasoned with the synagogue and the the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees. He he <clears throat> he he reasoned with them. By the Torah. And remember, too, he was a student of Gamaliel's, which means he he had memorized, word for word, the entire Tanakh. So Shaul or Paul, he knew exactly what he was doing, what he was saying. And he would have known, too, if there was any contradiction. And remember, he was a servant, a follower, a, a, a disciple, an apostle, an emissary of Yeshua HaMashiach. And he vouched for this man. So my question really is, Deuteronomy down here says that if anyone, basically in summary, if anyone comes to you and they do great things, sure, but if they're teaching you to turn away from the ways of Yahweh, to do away with his Torah, to follow after the ways of the Goyim, any practices, really, which I'll get into in another video, and you'll see it. It'll be simply titled Christ, uh, Christmas and Easter. <sighs> Which there are other things, but those are the two majors. What was I saying? I don't even know. But come on, guys. If Yeshua really taught that, he is not the Messiah. He is a false prophet. And if you've seen probably the majority of the videos I've posted, you'll, you'll know that I show, even Michael Jonah Rood, he shows, Jim Staley of Passion for Truth Ministries, he'll show you, uh, 
even even a Karaite Jew like Nehemiah Gordon, who I really like actually, as soon as I'm turning this off, I'm listening to uh, the radio broadcast from Truth to You. Uh, Keith Johnson, I mean, and there's so many. They know because they have studied out the scriptures, and I am also telling you now that Yeshua did not teach, nor did he come to do away with the Torah. He is the Mashiach, he is the Messiah, the Christ, if you will. He is the true prophet that was prophesied of. <laughs> and uh, in Nehemiah Gordon's eyes, he's also a Karite Jew, which Nehemiah is not Messianic, but that's fine. Um, so, okay. Now, us Messianics, or Hebrew Roots movements, followers, whatever you want to call us, um, we, we, we get this. The problem, really, is for the, the your average mainstream Christian you you you're the you guys are the ones who have to really deal with this. And I'm not trying to come at you cuz trust me, I used to be a Christian too. All right, and I do have I do have a soft spot in my heart for you guys. Um but you have to understand that the ways, the commands of God in and even of Yeshua are the Torah written by Moshe which was first spoken by the mouth of Yahweh. The Almighty, El Shaddai, El Yon. the Most High God. So that's my message. Thank you for uh, listening. But really, blessings to you and Shalom, because I really believe that this is important. It is relevant, and it needed to be said. Very harsh, but come on, guys. We can't mince words here. We can't go on saying that Yeshua did one thing when he did not. Uh, we're setting up a different Messiah, a completely different person than what Scripture and the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, teaches that he was. Okay? So that's that. And I'm lingering, so I'm going to turn it, I'm going to turn it off. Uh, shalom to you. Baruch haba b'shem Yahweh. Yahweh Aleheinu, Yahweh Echad. Hallelujah. Yeshua HaMashiach. I love Hebrew. <laughs>